Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Hey yep. Bob, how are you? Uh, Bob and I are here on a really nice snowy morning at Stow, um, testing the Fisher Ranger 92. Uh, we both got a pair on our feet, which is fun. It's fun to be able to test them at the same time. Um, don't forget about the Fisher Ski Happy Photo Contest. Uh, let's see, what's the date today? The 22nd? 22, yeah. 22nd, so you've got nine more days to enter photos in that Ski Happy Photo Contest. We're giving away a pair of those Ranger 102 FR, the hot pink skis that we reviewed last time. Um, so Bob and I have already taken some runs on these Ranger 92s. We're gonna do probably one or two more here. Uh, and then we'll stop somewhere on the trail where it's a little quieter and and kind of chat about their performance. But super fun skis, Bob, don't you think? Yeah, if we had like a category for like under the radar skis, this yeah. would probably be at the top of that list. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this this Ranger 92, it does definitely hasn't earned the popularity of, you know, other skis in this waist width range. There's a lot of popular skis around 90 underfoot. This one feels like it doesn't get the attention it deserves because um, it's it's really well rounded and it's a lot of fun to ski and today is like pretty perfect day for it you know we've got we're still in kind of early season conditions here in snow there's definitely some firm snow underneath but then we probably have at least an inch or two of fresh snow on top of that um, and we'll talk more about how the ski handles those conditions really well a little lower um, so yeah, we're gonna keep skiing and we'll talk to you in a bit. Here we are in a nice sheltered spot down here, really protected from the elements. Nice view up Toll Road. Yeah, it's kind of perfect because we still have a lot of trail closures here at Stowe. So we were able to kind of hide ourselves from the chaos on the open trails here. Um, and yeah, Bob, Ranger 92, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, this is a deep field. Kind of, we talk about the 88 to 90s and then that next step up, 90, 92 and you know even up to 94 something like a rustler or a qst and for whatever reason this one kind of goes under the radar and for no particular reason that i can see skiing on them all uh it's just you know it's that slim down version of the 99 ti which is a real fun ski as well so quick edge to edge floating in the tip you know it's got that carbon nose and so long low rocker really does a good job staying up and out of the snow and i mean stiff through the tail metal underfoot and kind of that center cord you know we had that cutaway ski that showed the construction really well yeah so that metal underfoot like connects to the carbon nose which yeah. is pretty cool but then it ends you know back foot you can really see it on the ski they do a good job of showing it and then you know just a pretty simple wood core throughout but the way they shape that wood you know their arrow shape design uh, makes it bite in a little bit more so it's not you know it's not an overly demanding ski right especially you know you think about a ti you know you would think that that thing is going to be really stiff but it's not you know it's very pliable and you know friendly to maneuver around so it's just a blast especially on kind of these variable early season conditions we have yeah i feel like we talk a lot about the differences between the ti and the fr rangers and how these have a flatter tail yep and i think you could listen to that and kind of take that to mean that these are really demanding 
yeah. this 92 definitely isn't no. I think when you get up into the 99, it feels a little bit more demanding yeah. just because it's like there's more mass yeah, back more there. And, um, but yeah, this 92, you know, it, like I'm kind of thinking back to when we reviewed that Ranger 94 FR. Yep. There's a lot of similarities in this ski. It's just a little bit more like responsive out of that tail. Right. There's more, there are more power that you can generate out of the tail. Yeah. And there's some crossover with that 94 for sure. You know, and if you're, you know, more of an Eastern skier, spending more time on the trail, you know, this 92 Ti is, you know, definitely a, a stronger option, yeah. especially for a more advanced skier. Right. Um, you know, that 94 is a little lighter, um, but you know, still really, you know, that thing's pretty good too. I know we're talking about the 92. Right. But, um, you know, just a really well-rounded ski does it all very well. Yeah, definitely. Now to break it down into like specific characteristics and specific performance like what, what do you think just in terms of like overall edge grip and how it stacks up among competitors in this category it's surprising you know like that's kind of the thing is it's you don't expect it to bite as well because it feels so light and then it does bite yeah you know again you kind of see that ti moniker and you think oh it's going to be heavy and you know heavy and damp and stable and it is damp and stable but not heavy right so they really hit the mark on that one yeah um, but yeah really good edge grip especially through the tail of the ski i mean you can definitely feel the energy come around yeah which is nice now, i do think it's fair to say that it's not like endless edge grip yeah There's... i mean you're you know you're gonna want something with that full metal right you know for that like but... thinking back to last week you know we skied that kessley mx88 right that ski feels a little bit stronger on just firm snow holding an edge oh yeah but and i think that's uh, that's yeah. perfectly reasonable because this ski is a lot more playful right exactly um much easier to, to do you know those quicker turns on the side of the trail like we were doing earlier yeah. um you know unfortunately there's not a not many moguls out here these days but um if yeah. there were i would gladly drive these tips into the front of a bump sure you know it's and not feel like it would be abusive like that kessley would sure so right you know, exactly you, you definitely have that benefit of being able to access the flexibility of the ski versus right you know being bounced by it right so you can definitely control these really well yeah but yeah it's i mean it's snowing pretty good right now but there's definitely some really firm stuff underneath yeah, there yeah, it's hard. but only once today did i feel my outside ski kind of losing some yeah. purchase and i would i would chalk that up to user error just as much as the, right. the ski not yeah. being able to do it because i'm not like the world's best skier and i probably like was waiting a little bit weird or something yeah um but no i feel like and that's a perfect transition like compared to a ski like the mx88 like like you were saying, like this is gonna feel a lot more compliant in moguls. Right. But it's also interesting because if you were to compare it to the Ranger 94, it kind of requires a better mogul skier, I sure. think. Yeah. Because that Ranger 94, you know, you get a lot of slip and smear out of the tail. Yeah. This requires more like like you would do a very good job skiing moguls on this ski. I feel like I would have an easier time on the Ranger 94. Right. Because I do more like smeary slipping and you have that like i was a competitive mogul skier style yeah. i also weigh probably 60 or 80 pounds more than you too so <laughs> i always, I always <laughs> forget about easier that to, easier for me to just push into a ski like that true um but yeah i mean great skis yep i mean heck they could even be a touring ski too yeah they're very light like there is yeah. a little skin attachment yep. spot on the tail and if, yeah, if you're like an East Coast skier here in Stowe and you want something that's still quick edge to edge and uh, that can do pretty much everything, it, it could be a cool touring ski, like Duke right. PT or Shift or something yep. like that. I do think more people will choose it as an Alpine ski, but just another example of how well-rounded this ski is in general. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And I'm glad we got another crack at it. You know, I had it two years ago in the ski test when it first came out and you know had a really positive initial reaction to it and always and have wanted to get back on it since then so yeah glad we were able to do this yeah i mean like we were saying it kind of flies under the radar it like almost flies under the radar for us right. too yep. like we we've been doing a lot of test days already this year and like when we're going out on the test day with fisher 
chances are the rep's not like reaching for these out of the truck. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that like, yeah, we don't get on this ski too much either. Right. But it's really, really fun when we do. And just a, yeah, a really good reminder of how good it is. And just the depth of the field and this the ranger line. The ranger or, line, but I meant like this 90 to 92. Totally. You know, range as a whole. Where yeah. You know, it's that really well-rounded ski. Right. Um, and so obviously ski companies make a lot of them. And right. So these are, you know, it's just a good, good time to get on them and see what, you know, a, a company like Fisher can add to the you know add to the pile yeah absolutely and i feel like it's even more valuable in that 90 category to have a ski that's well rounded right because those that's like the true all mountain ski yeah. like when you get up into 100 underfoot like that to me is starting to feel it's like an all mountain ski that's leaning towards free ride right so like it makes sense when a ski like that is more dedicated to a certain type of performance like a 100 ski that's soft and playful or a 100 ski that's like super stiff and chargey yeah. Like they have their more specific applications. This is just such a, it's a true, true all mountain ski. Yeah. yeah. And I like how it doesn't have the metal throughout. Yes. I, know, yeah, I agree. It does have that, you know, the wood on the sides and the wood in the tail, yeah. you know, unencumbered by that metal. So it does make it, you know, that much more playful and pliable. Yeah. Even for a TI. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, cool. So we're going to keep skiing here. Uh, finish off our last run here on the range 92. Um, let us know if you have any questions about it. Definitely enter some photos in the Fisher Ski Happy Contest. And uh, happy holidays.